This is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Get real. No. No. This is a sham. It's finally here. Drum roll. Welcome to DBL. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Stephanie Jones, fresh off a plane yes. from San Juan Capistrano. <laughs> and these places are getting more and more adventurous. Every time. She lived with the penguins in Antarctica. Every time she's I wish. on. Every that time she's so on. Do you, do you know what's funny? It's like, Jeff, you're, you make a joke, but I was like, for real? Would you <laughs> That's right. where Steph, Steph is in this zone where any story you tell me about her, I'll believe oh it. Yeah. That's right. a real we're gonna, compliment. We're gonna, I'll cool. take it. We're going to grow that it gladly. Like, every time you're on, I'm going to think of a new story. Yeah. And I'm I'll always looking at your Instagram in the Wendy's parking lot. <laughs> and I'm like, good for her. <laughs> <laughs> for real. <laughs> it's true. I'm happy for I'm, her. I'm going to let that one sit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to let that one go. Let's start. Welcome to DBL. All right. We talked about former NFL player Michael Orr on yesterday's show. Everybody's talking about it. And now the Tui family is responding to the lawsuit with some shocking allegations of their own. So as we mentioned, Michael claimed the Tui's withheld money from the film The Blind Side and tricked him into signing a document making them his conservators and not their adopted son. That's where things, there's a lot of confusing mm -hmm. things, but that's really confusing. In a statement from their lawyer, the Tui's called the lawsuit offensive and ridiculous. They also alleged that Michael said he would plant a negative story about them in the press unless they paid him $15 million. Ooh, a little blackmail mm -hmm. huh? and mm -hmm. that Michael is trying to drum up attention to promote his latest book. Meantime, some people online want Sandra Bullock to return her Oscar for playing Leanne Tui in the movie. Oh. <laughs> But her co-star, <laughs> Quentin Aaron, who played Michael, says her brilliant performance shouldn't be tarnished by something that has nothing to do with her whatsoever. Wh why are we even talking about insane, mentally ill people online giving their opinion about something that has no credence whatsoever in reality? Because that's called pop culture. That's, not, that's the voices of pop culture, unfortunately, which is ridiculous. I don't think it's the voices of pop culture. I think it's the voices of like a really sad, low-life society. They are the same. They are the same. But, but, but you, why are we giving it, why are we making it real? Why are we giving it a pulse? The last three years were fantasy camp for these people. And some of their ideas actually got through while they were spinning around in a tutu in their basement between typing. Their ideas got through to people in our business. There's people that are fired now. People that weren't qualified to take jobs are taking jobs. Now they can't get rid of those people. We need to stop. Like when we get a, whenever crazy people write on the internet, you just have to block them and then move on with yeah. your life. Mm. I think what scares people is the sheer number mm -hmm. and like how these things can gather mm -hmm. momentum. And if you're a person that doesn't really understand the internet, the, like we do, or especially people younger than us do, you might look and be like, seven million people want her to give her Oscar back? That's seven million people that but may is have. It? It, yes, or is but it out of four? there's eight billion four people, people. Right. Yeah. Right. and you know who knows who has multiple accounts? Who knows if and those are parody accounts, so bots, and things like that? I, I think a lot of these things are ridiculous, but on their face they appear to have some merit. So these big networks panic. They're like, mm -hmm. I don't want four million people not to watch my show. People are going to watch the Oscars. People are going to watch the Super Bowl. But these numbers come in, and I think executives are in a glass conference room panicking. Yeah. I think that's what it is. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying these are people that are just want to do anything to keep that check coming. So they're like, okay, we'll give it, give it back. They it's the mob voice, right? right? You're terrified of the mob. One thing is leave Sandra Bullock alone. She's dealing with her partner who just died of ALS. Leave her that's out of this. great point. Secondly, if I tell Al that I'm the president of ABC and I want him to sign this contract and he signs it, I'm going back to the contract part, and he signs it and then I hold him to it and then he takes me to court and says I was, the word is coerced into signing a contract, this is null and void. This doesn't mean anything. So I would like to know about why they didn't really adopt him, why he found that out in February of this year. So you're talking about the conservatorship papers yeah, that he thought were adoption that papers. he's saying yeah. I was signed and tricked into doing. If they said we're adopting you and he wasn't, that's coercion. That's a null and void. He has a huge case here, huge. And that's also fraudulent, allegedly, of the Tubies in a terrible manner. Do I don't know anything this, else. Though? Oh, gosh, I think there, I mean, I ain't seen some serious receipts. So they're saying he's been blackmailing us. So, okay, how? Have you got text messages? Have you got emails? How has he asked for such a huge, right. crazy number? 15 million is, like, obscene. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, I think that's, it's so, so odd, all of this. And I mean, of course, then the little devil in me is also thinking, well, if he's got a new book, it's a very 
convenient time, isn't it, for all of this magically to come out now? And he's only just found out now, all in the light of his new book coming in a few months. But time. he has been talking about it for a long, for years. He's he, been discussing. Yeah, because I, I, I remember w when he was still playing. Because I thought he was would really play this up. I mean, if there's a book, a uh, movie about Steph yeah, being adopted, course. and then it comes out that you don't like your family. That was, it was shocking to me. Of course. I think this all hinges whether in it would de decide whether Tory was correct or you were correct in the situation is what went down with the conservatorship. Right. Because oh, if he's I mean, that's, 18. That's serious. Yeah, that's yeah. What be, because my only thing is if you are going to adopt him or we're going to adopt him, my theory, and I hope I'm wrong about this, is that they did not adopt him because that would then allow him to have a cut of the family, you know, when they pass on some of, the, yeah, some yeah. of their inheritance. So they sign him to a conservatorship, funnel him into a school that they were friendly with, and then take his story and profit that off it. That sounds bad. And yeah. I, think I mean, that's it's horrendous. Where, I mean, it's really gross. And yeah. I hope I'm wrong. Yeah. But yeah. that it's it's plausible. I hope, I, I hope I'm wrong. But they haven't really shown the the world the otherwise. Yeah. They're just saying this is ridiculous and hurtful. It's like, yeah. hey, like you said, where are those receipts at? Yeah, I, that's what we need to see. We need to see exactly. some receipts on He's some accounts. He's some in the lawsuit, just so you guys know. He has put out, Sean too, he has, but agreed. We need a financial accounting, what's going on. Yeah, exactly. And what's his book going to be about? Oh, Michael Orr, this sounds like the blind side. I yeah. know, I know. <laughs> I don't it's know. Be the exact He's story. got more to say. All right, I like this story. Bradley Cooper is being criticized over his portrayal of the late composer and conductor Leonard Bernstein. In a preview for the Netflix movie Maestro, Bradley is wearing a prosthetic nose because he's an actor to play Leonard, who was Jewish. He's an actor. But some people online say this reinforces negative stereotypes about Jewish people. Bradley, who also directed the film, is not Jewish. One person online posted a photo of Bradley in character next to the real Leonard and wrote, quote, the big anti-Semitic prosthetic nose on Bradley was definitely not necessary. Okay. Here's another look at Bradley playing an older version of Leonard next to Leonard in real life. Okay. That's called a makeup artist for yeah. people out there in, in, uh, in, in, I guess, reality that don't know what reality is. It's, again, these stories of people not being the exact person who they're portraying that... I can't believe there's a voice and people are really taking this seriously. Like in Hollywood, like, should we not have Bradley Cooper, one of the best actors in the world, portray this man who people might or may not know of and draw attention to this? This is going to be an Oscar-winning performance because of the great makeup that he has and prosthetics. They'll and win, the too. Right, they'll win, too. We've gotten to a point where reality is so blurred that they don't know the difference between a movie and reality and what's in front of them and what's not, and it's... If I was a family member of one of these people, I'd be concerned for their well-being. Fair, uh, fair. Now, let me talk about the, the children of Leonard Bernstein. All three have come out and said, we're absolutely fine with the nose. It looks like dad. We're totally okay. I do want to take this a little bit more seriously because Jewish noses have often been a stereotype that we've heard of. If you didn't know, Hitler, and sorry to get serious, in the Holocaust would measure with measuring tapes. And, and if it went past a certain amount, you were killed. There was a perfect race and an inferior race, and that inferior race didn't have those types of noses. So when people come out and say, oh, this nose, there's a bigger meaning behind right. it. Right. I appreciate your, right? your the point context, of view. I definitely I, appreciate your right. point of view. Italians have big noses, too. Right. You know what I mean? Yours is a little bit more serious. There was a context serious. to it. Right. This has nothing to do with Hollywood. He's portraying someone. Agree. You could maybe point those things out in the film, or I don't think you would in this particular film, but it's a valid point to be made. But he's an actor. You can't take on all these social and past issues that's happened and take it all on your shoulders as an actor. Right. I think that's the whole point is <laughs> you take something that's real and you mix it in with a nonsensical point. I felt like he looks dead on in those pictures. I mm. thought the makeup artist did a great job, but you can't say that. So what you have to do is take a real cultural issue, the fact that uh, Jewish people have been persecuted and killed. Specifically and for hunted. the size of yes. their noses, right. And you take that real fact that has nothing to do with this film mm -hmm. and then incorporate it and put it out on social media. That's and where I see we... Uh, we that's I mean, Tori, how do you feel? I, As oh, a, my God. In sixth grade, I could play anyone on the earth, and I chose Leonard Bernstein, and if I had had a prosthetic nose, I probably would have put it on, too. I have no problem with this. That's what the man looked like. If, that's what, what the man looked like. Are, is Halloween gone in uh, the next couple of years? If, if you because play Don King, could you put his hair on? 
Apparently, I Apparently not. I, I couldn't. Apparently, no, 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 absolutely not. I played no. Millie Vanilli in Halloween. Halloween, could I not? I didn't do blackface, but I did it. All right, we're going to talk a little bit more in the break Crazy. about what did we're going to be for Halloween. Hmm? Check us out on YouTube. Coming up on DBL, our interview with a man who traveled to every single country just like Stephanie without setting foot on a plane <laughs> and a blue collar political anthem becomes an instant hit on country charts. We're talking about the hype surrounding the new song next. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Well, order side, I thought. Oh, we're on? Sorry. So, Jure, our makeup artist, is talking about the prosthetic Special nose. effects wise, like, not because of, like, anti Semitism or anything like that. That nose was just bad. It was just bad nose. It As a professional. But here, let me make, let me make a, if I'm trying to make a point specifically about the nose, if I take um, Bradley Cooper, I'm going to show it not exactly like this. I'm going to show it like this so it's not as big. Or I'm gonna show it like this to make it bigger, right? To right. prove my point. I to also, give the angle. See what I I'm totally saying? do. Yeah. To be honest, and I you don't think they're sensitive in Hollywood about that point very specifically? True. Very Come true. Very true. But I did think it was like I'm you not know, meaning you. I'm no, I know. But bad wigs. You know when you see bad wigs. Mm -hmm. It. I didn't think. I did think his. It didn't have to be. It didn't look exactly identical. No. I'll be honest. Again, yeah. take the correct. angles. You're take right. The angles. You're right. Oh, you're right. right. The, it could be the, the angle. Order angle like, right. Did look if you're a lot proving better. a point, you yeah. want to make it look worse. Yeah. Correct. I guarantee you, they took the exact dimensions of, of what it was. I'm probably. Well, because you, no, you did. Yeah. If you didn't know him, by the way, he created Candide yeah. and West Side Story. You're just getting to this. This is my point. This is how art dies. The fact that you guys have squares arguing about like stuff that they could never do, which is apply a prosthetic nose. People that are more skilled at anything than they will ever right. be. We're not talking about the merits of the film. We're not talking about the lighting. Or We're not him. talking about or the Leonard cinematography. Bernstein. We're not talking about the storyline. We're not talking about any surprises or any uh, the things that we it's expect to, to see from the director. Too. This is how art dies: is when you just have people talking about these points that are inarguable. I don't understand what's the point of this. So are, do they? I just worry we'll, we'll get to a film? point where literally, unless I mean. Race is one thing, right? I really do feel like that, but I feel like, you know, obviously I'm not, I can't play a black woman, obviously. Right. Um, like, you can't be Jeff or whatever, yeah. you know? Like, it just is what it is. But I feel like it's getting to the point where it's like, unless you are um, LGBTQ, unless you are Jewish, unless you are Christian, whatever. Welcome back to DBL. A country singer from Virginia has been hailed as a voice of the working class frustrations by some conservatives. Oliver Anthony's song, Rich Men North of Richmond, has 15, it's a clever name. That is a good name. million views on YouTube. Uh-oh, I just said that without yeah, knowing the story. You're terrible. Look what Jeff said. <laughs> I'm the crazy person in the tutu he was talking about. Anyways, <laughs> and this song's topping the charts on iTunes. Here's a bit of the song. Lord knows it all just wanna All right, his song also makes references to Jeffrey Epstein. Oh, and obese people making or milking the social welfare system. But as That's you can see me. from his performance in North Carolina, has had resonated with a lot of people. Can I just be very clear, and then I want to get to Al. Rich men north of Richmond, if you didn't know, D.C. in Richmond. He's talking about the people from right. Washington, D.C. That's why it's clever. Right, yeah. and if you didn't know that That's and you don't point. know where Richmond is, you don't have any idea what he's talking about. So he has claimed that he is centrist, and he is only talking about the rich, fat, cats in Washington, D.C. with these lyrics, not about the everyday people. Please. I, I just want to great, I, Al, he lost out. That lyric, literally. I think that's a great lyric for a song. What, uh, the, the, the title? The title. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I agree mean, with I, you. I, I, I that has nothing to do with the rest of it. No, it's a great title. I mean, the only thing that he, he lost me with was uh, with the obese people milking the system. 
again, it just it, it makes me sad and disheartened because it, it, even the people that like himself that seem like they are immersed in it don't understand mm -hmm. why people are obese. And it's because they have terrible food that's loaded with carbs. Yeah, tell me how much like a bunch of organic grapes cost. Yeah, 13 12, 13 bucks. Yeah. How much does a Domino's hot and ready pizza cost? Five? Mm -hmm. You can feed a so, whole family. Yeah, so what are you, you going right, to do, Steph? Right. And so the fact that those people do gain weight, it's just so offensive that people still don't realize that that's why people are overweight and that there is a system that keeps you, once you have no money, you get caught in the system where your license is suspended and then you get a ticket on your car. And once you were in that, once you're in this predatory loan situation, you cannot get out of it. Right. Especially when you have no parents or somebody. So I, I, if people understood that, I think They'd understand. some of the hatred of the poor will go away. And this is the line just so people know. Well, God, if you're five foot three and you're 300 pounds, taxes ought not to pay for your bags of fudge rounds. What do you think, Steph? Oh, gosh. I mean, I've not heard the whole song. I've not right. heard the whole lyrics. That, I agree completely with what Al is saying. And I, I remember literally learning about that and learning about, about some communities in America that are so far away, there is no even local supermarket. Food deserts. They've yeah. only they have food desert. They've literally got their local, um, you know, gas station, and it's whatever they can get there, and they've got to feed their kids with that. And obviously, that's going to give health implications when you're living off chemicals and you can right. only afford that because the natural whole foods or whatever is three hours away and it's a month's wage to feed your family for one week. It's crazy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but I will say he's got a beautiful voice. Yes. All right. We'll leave it there. Catchy song. We'll be right back. And the, the banjo. I liked his yeah. little yeah. guitar. Yeah. Yeah. I said we'll be right back. Yeah. We're just <laughs> talking over We're there. More than 3.7 million people hold Parent Plus student loans. Federal loans that parents can take out to help their child pay for college. We recently verified that those loans were excluded from the Biden administration's new income-driven repayment plan known as SAVE, which will forgive some student loan borrowers' balances after between 10 and 25 years of payments. Verify viewer Terry asked us if there are other loan forgiveness programs available for Parent Plus borrowers. And using these sources, we can verify that yes, there are. But there's a catch. Federal Parent Plus loans have to be consolidated in order to qualify for forgiveness under these other federal programs. Let me break down your options. First is the Income Contingent Repayment Plan, or ICR. Under this program, qualified borrowers can have their monthly student loan payments reduced based on their income and family size. ICR plans cap monthly payments at 20% of your discretionary income, or offer fixed payments based on a 12-year loan term, whichever is lower. And after making payments for 25 years, any remaining debt will be forgiven, according to the Education Department. Another option is the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program, or PSLF. To qualify, the Education Department says Parent PLUS borrowers must work full-time in a qualifying public service job. The student loans must be consolidated into a direct loan, and those loans must be repaid under an ICR plan. After making 10 years' worth of payments, totaling 120 payments, any remaining debt is forgiven. To apply for the Income Contingent Repayment Plan or the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program, go to studentaid.gov. With your Verify, I'm Ariane Daytil. Welcome back. Thor Pedersen is a world traveler like you've never seen before. Earlier, we spoke with him and heard all about his decade-long adventures. Take a look. If you think you've traveled a lot, chances are Torbjorn Thor Peterson has you beat. I was born in Denmark in 78. I've just always had a keen interest in, in, in travel. And Europe is small. And if you want to go skiing, you can't really do it in Denmark. Then you travel through Germany, you go to Austria, you go to Italy, you go to Switzerland. Several tours in the military and a job in logistics sent Thor to many new places. I worked uh, a year in Bangladesh. I worked in Kazakhstan and Azerbaijan. I worked in the Arctic circle. I worked in Greenland. I worked in Florida. Worked in a number of European countries. But 10 years ago, he embarked on an incredible journey to visit every country in the world without flying. Well, it all began with an email from my father back in January 2013. And I read about people who had gone to every country in the world. And I wasn't even aware you could do such a thing. I discovered that no one had done it completely without flying. 
And for me, that was pretty big. With a budget of $20 a day, Thor was on his way, relying on the kindness of strangers across the globe and sometimes putting his life in danger. Someone puts a gun in your face and there is danger when you don't know. When you're on a bus but you have no idea about how the bus has been serviced, if the brakes are working, uh, what the condition is of the tires. I had cerebral malaria. Um, so that's a parasite that goes in your body and it goes to your brain. And uh, that could have been the end of me within a couple of days uh, without treatment. Now he's back home in Copenhagen, safe and sound, until the next challenge comes his way. Unbelievable. Please welcome to the show, Thor Peter Yeah. Thor. Yes, Thor. Hi there. Uh, unbelievable, Thor. Now, I have to ask you this. Did you do anything mentally to prepare you for certain spots, knowing I'm not going to be able to fly to them? Did you get yourself in a mode? <laughs> yes, I did that, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I was ready. Um, I've, I've had a life full of travel. My parents stem from two different countries, Denmark and Finland. There was a lot of going back and forth between the borders. And we lived in Canada for a bit and in the US. So I grew up sort of uh, across different, intercontinentally, I guess you'd say. And then eventually, I. Uh, grew up to have an interest in the world and I would travel whenever I could. I got a job within shipping and logistics and uh, I worked in, in various countries around the world, Bangladesh and Libya, Kazakhstan, in the Arctic Circle and so on. So all of that sort of built up to be a sense of preparation to all of this. I served in the military for three years and on a mission abroad as well. And, so yeah, I've always been interested in, in cultures and, and the world and people and what's around the corner. Thor, I'm super jealous. I'm sure you have thousands of stories <laughs> I'd love to hear. But one of them, you arrived in Hong Kong right before the pandemic and you ended up staying there for two years. Obviously you weren't prepared <laughs> to stay somewhere this long. What did you do? Yeah, well, that's the thing. I didn't know. <laughs> if, if, I, if I had arrived and someone could have shown me the future and said this is it for the next two years then i would have headed to the airport <laughs> and it would have been over uh, but there was always hope in front of me yes okay so what was the most unexpected mode of transportation you used during your travels Oh, there's been so much transportation <laughs> in the entire world, and it's been almost a decade. But uh, in more recent years, I got to go on board a tugboat, and that was brilliant because that was kind of a childhood dream. I don't know if I might have had a book when I was a kid with a little tugboat with a big eyes and a big <laughs> smiley mouth. But I, I, it was great getting on board a tugboat, just the word tugboat. I thought that was good. <laughs> But it, it, it wasn't as comfortable as I was hoping. It was sort of like bobbing around in every direction. Crushing <laughs> any story at a oh, house yeah. party. Oh, yeah, he yes. wins. Wanders this by. Can't. This guy. Story. I know. I feel like Jeff is teary-eyed because that's his dream. Dude, I'm like that's in preschool a... with my travels <laughs> yeah. compared to this guy. Thor, yeah. you two have a lot of similarities. Yeah. Uh, Thor, thank you so much for joining us today. DBL Nation, be sure to follow Thor on Instagram at Once Upon a Saga to see what he's up wow. to and where He'll go next. Thanks again. Congratulations on all your travels and success. We'll be right back. It's amazing. Nice. Thank you. Thanks. Nearly 100 people dead, a community with centuries of tradition destroyed. The Maui fires are among the most catastrophic in American history. As many people look to see how they can help, we've been getting some questions about online donation platforms. Namely, does GoFundMe take a cut of the donations? Several of our viewers wanted to know, so let's verify. Our sources are GoFundMe and Charity Watch. The answer is yes, GoFundMe takes a cut of donations. For each donation to a fundraiser, the company automatically deducts a 2.9% transaction fee plus an additional 30 cents. So if you and 14 friends each donated $100 to a fundraiser, of the 1,500 total dollars, 1,452 would go to the cause and 48 would go to fees. A lot of that money goes to covering the cost of securely processing the transactions. Some of it goes to just growing GoFundMe's business since it is a for-profit company. Lori Styron, the executive director of Charity Watch, told us these fees aren't out of the ordinary. 
maintaining the programming and security necessary to process transactions safely and to protect a donor's data is expensive. So charging reasonable fees to provide such services is justified, she said. Other crowdfunding platforms like Kickstarter, Indiegogo, and Facebook typically charge similar fees. With your Verify, I'm Casey Decker. Are you skeptical of headlines and what you see on social media? We are too. The Verify newsletter helps you distinguish between true and false information by answering your questions. It provides fast facts on trending topics, spotlights major stories, and even includes a daily fun fact for all those trivia buffs out there. Get Verify's fast facts delivered every weekday to your email inbox. Go to verifythis.com slash email to check it out. Verify here with your fast fact. This viral video with more than a million views claims to show three UFOs flying over New Mexico and asks, do you believe the footage? So let's verify. Is this video real? These are our sources. Verify took a few frames from the viral video and ran them through a reverse image search. This led us to both TikTok and Instagram videos posted on July 31st by user IcemanFox1 with the caption, filmed with Digital Combat Simulator. DCS is a video game that offers realistic simulations of aircraft and other military equipment. Iceman Fox One's profile says they regularly post realistic DCS videos and confirmed in an email to verify that the viral video was generated using DCS. So no, this video claiming to show UFOs in the sky over New Mexico is not real. With your fast fact, I'm Brandon Lewis. Welcome back. Joint pain doesn't have to be the ending to all the activities you love. There are lots of hobbies that have little to no stress on your joints. It's time for some joint and muscle support brought to you by Omega XL. First, knitting and crocheting can improve dexterity, reduce stress, and improve focus, Tori. Yeah, I know. I don't know what is <laughs> happening. Next, gardening can really help with mobility and flexibility. Lastly, cooking. You can make balanced anti-inflammatory meals to reduce joint pain. Omega XL has improved the lives of millions of consumers. Supported by 30 years of clinical research, Omega XL's powerful and proven benefits have transformed the lives of athletes, celebrities, and dedicated daily users. Call 800-725-2612 or visit OmegaXL.com for more information. Tori, you do two of the... Three I do two things. of the three. My garden is in full bloom. It looks fabulous. But I will tell you with knitting or cross stitching, if you eat a lot and you want to lose some weight and you're a bored eater, like my mom will sometimes or me will just like constantly, it keeps your hands busy. Mm. So it's a really good way to lose weight actually. Or good way to lose weight is have you cook. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> the other day I just went, Brooks, order some dominoes. <laughs> not this is not, were you making a cake? Bye. I was cooking rice. <laughs>